Hello, it's David again. Um, I uh, posted a couple of uh, recent videos exposing the CES thing, Apologia and Mormon stories, and generally all the anti-Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints slander against the most beautiful thing on earth, which is the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Uh, exposing all this slander as uh, exactly that. And um, I've gotten a, a fair bit of feedback. A lot of the people who think that their slander against the church is valid, like the Mormon stories types, CES letter types, they think that uh, unless I actually drill down with them, and engage in debate with them point by point. And of course, uh, Jeff Durbin at Apology is this way. They want to debate point by point these uh, these accusations that they have. And of course, in uh, Apologia's case, they think that their accusations are biblical. Uh, that's not really the case generally with a lot of the anti-Latter-day Saint slander that comes from, for example, in the CES letter or in uh, Mormon stories, Mormon discussions, that kind of thing. Uh, but in their case, they're just trying to destroy the credibility of the restoration, the credibility of Joseph Smith as a prophet of God, the credibility of the Book of Mormon and as actually being uh something that is from God and was given through Joseph Smith and translated by the gift and power of God and try to tear down all the different uh, aspects of the glorious Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And I think somehow I have some obligation to kind of contend point by point and disprove their accusations or attempt to disprove their accusations, their slanderous accusations, point by point. Uh, and of course, I just I just think that's uh, ridiculous. And I, I did, in my mind, I actually have and will continue to ref refute everything they say as a package deal and everything that those who slander the church are, because really, fundamentally what it comes down to it's a spirit it's the uh, the evil one satan he's the prince of the power of the air as it says in ephesians 2 the spirit that worketh in the sons of disobedience in revelation 12 it calls him uh, the accuser of the brethren that his very nature is to accuse and uh, jesus specifically jesus christ specifically called him a liar and the father of lies you know when he speaks uh when he speaks lies, he speaks his native tongue. And so th this is the influence that these people are under. And of course, uh, whenever Jesus ran into those kinds of uh, people that were under the influence of accusatory spirits, he did not play their game. He basically just said, look, you don't know what spirit you're of, uh, which is really fundamentally what I have to say. But uh, that doesn't mean that the things I'm saying don't disprove their accusations. And I'm just going to give you an example of that. All right. The thrust, the primary thrust of the accusations, all these anti Church of Jesus Christ of Latter day Saint accusations, is actually directed primarily at Joseph Smith. And of course, the reason for that is obvious. Uh, smite the shepherd and scatter the sheep. Joseph Smith was called by God as the prophet of the restoration to bring about the restoration of all things and the dispensation of the fullness of times and to, uh, to reestablish the true church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints on the earth after it had been in abeyance for 1700 years since the apostasy towards the beginning of the second century.
the great apostasy when the church as a city that has foundations whose builder and maker is God essentially vanished from the earth. And uh, this is this is what actually happened. Uh, Heavenly Father called Joseph Smith in that grove with Jesus Christ by his side, two separate beings, called Joseph Smith when Joseph Smith, as a, a young boy of 14 years old, frustrated by all of the religious division and disunity and people all waving the same Bible from different groups competing for his loyalty, uh, grabbed a hold of the promise in James chapter 1, verse 5, that if any man lack wisdom, let him ask God, and God will give it to him. And he took that promise, and he went out into the grove and uh, cried out, overcame tremendous spiritual opposition to cry out from the bottom of his heart that he could hear from our Heavenly Father and know what to do in terms of which church he should join. And of course, uh, at that point, Heavenly Father and the Lord Jesus appeared to him, and he was instructed that he shouldn't join of any of them, but that they were all uh, basically apostate, and not that the church actually needed to be restored. And so in any case, so if, if you can take down Joseph Smith, the whole thing falls apart, because Joseph Smith, his prophetic ministry as the prophet of the restoration of all things and the dispensation of the, full, the fullness of times, and, and his being given the Book of Mormon, uh, and then the gift of power of God to translate those golden plates and bring forth the Book of Mormon, in English, uh, without that, the, the restoration of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints essentially has nothing to stand on. So the attacks, fundamentally, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, it stands or falls on the validity, validity of Joseph Smith's prophetic calling and the truthfulness of the uh, the Book of Mormon actually being translated from those golden plates by the gift and power of God. So th this is the most fundamental. Uh, th this is where the attacks come. Fundamentally, they come against Joseph Smith and the Book of Mormon. And uh, so the first thing I want to address, th th I just want to deal with all that because all of these attacks have not one leg to stand on. In fact, the attacks not only do not undermine Joseph Smith as a true prophet of God, they actually establish him as a true prophet of God. And, and I just want to make this perfectly clear. You, you know, this idea that, that Mormon stories, Mormon discussions, apologia, CES letter, they, they have this, this endless wave of slanderous attacks against the prophet, prophet Joseph Smith and the validity of the Book of Mormon, the validity of its translation, so on and so forth. And they they think that those things have to be refuted. But actually, I mean, bring it on, because all you're doing is proving the truth of Joseph Smith's prophetic calling and his glorious ministry and, and proving that, that Joseph Smith is actually from God. And you can say, how can... So, you know... If your attacks are just proving that Joseph Smith is actually a prophet of God, a true prophet of God, why would I have to refute the attacks? You're helping me. I, you know, go for it. Do your worst. Because your worst actually proves that the church is true and that Joseph Smith is true and that the Book of Mormon is the word of God. Okay, now... Uh, let, let's let's just I'll just give you an example of how this works. All right. I got a comment earlier today. William Burrich posted this comment. Okay, it's very short and sweet. Good for you, William. The Mormon Church is not the Church of Jesus Christ! Exclamation point! Exclamation point! It's the Church of Joseph Smith, the first of many false prophets in capital letters. Three exclamation points. So in other words, William wants us to know what he really thinks about 
the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, the most glorious church on earth, the restoration of all things in the dispensation of the fullness of times. He thinks it's not the Church of Jesus Christ. It's the Church of Joseph Smith. It's the evil Mormons. And uh, Joseph Smith was a false prophet, and the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is a false church. And he's like super emphatic about that. He absolutely knows that's true. And somehow he thinks by stating that emphatically, he's proved his point. All right. And uh, I know a lot of the attacks, th this, is, this is quite simplistic. An awful lot of the attacks against Joseph Smith and the validity of his ministry and against the Book of Mormon and its translation and all these things, they're a lot more uh, subtle, I guess you could say. They, they try to use supposed scholarly opinion and supposed historical fact and supposed expert opinion and and just multiply this kind of stuff just to a ridiculous level and just throw enough mud, plausible lies basically, mixed with a bit of truth, to try and throw enough mud in the hope that some of it will stick. But it's, it's much more subtle than William's claim here. But everything that I say about William's claim in my response to him applies to all the rest of this also. So if, if you want me to make a point-by-point point, uh, debate and, you know, refutation of the opinion of this B. Weiss you scholar or this historical document or this truth claim or that uh, accusation against the truth claims, I'm not going to go there. It's silly because all of your slander just proves Joseph Smith's a true prophet and that he couldn't possibly... It's not even remotely possible for Joseph Smith to be a false prophet. It cannot be. According to the very words of God, who is not a man that he should lie, and the words of his son, Jesus Christ, who specifically says at the end of John 12, verses 44 to 50, that, that when you saw him, you saw the Father. And when you heard what he said, it wasn't from him. He only said what the father gave him to say, exactly the way the father gave him to say it. Okay, so, so in any case, let me just uh, share my response to William's attack. And my response also applies to all of these attacks from CES, from Mormon stories, Mormon discussions, apologia, all of these anti, all, all of these channels and outlets that continually throw lies and slander, this huge accusatory fog, mist of darkness is continually poured out on the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, and particularly on Joseph Smith and the Book of Mormon, because Joseph Smith is the foundational prophet of the Restoration, and the Book of Mormon is the keystone of our religion. So we, we know what you're doing. You're trying to take down our foundation and the pillar that uh, upholds us, you know, with Jesus Christ as the foundation, Joseph Smith, the apostles and prophets are the foundation of the true church with Jesus as the chief cornerstone and our chief and founding prophet was Joseph Smith. So anyway, here we go. Thanks for that, William. So William says the Mormon church, it's not the church of Jesus Christ. It's the church of Joseph Smith and Joseph Smith is a false prophet. Thanks for that, William. <laughs> According to the very words of our amazing Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, you just proved, and all you other slanders prove also, okay, that beyond any doubt that Joseph Smith is not a false prophet. Well done. Thank you for that. Let me tell you exactly what Jesus Christ said that defines for all eternity one of the chief of several main ways that Jesus Christ said false prophets can be discerned from true prophets, all right? And, of course, this is key because those of us that are in the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, we love Jesus Christ. We love Heavenly Father, and we love His beloved Son, Jesus Christ, he paid the price for our sins. He gave his life for us. He shed his blood for us in the garden. 
he began to shed his blood for us. And surely, as it says in Isaiah 53, he bore our griefs and carried our sorrows. And all of the, the deep burdens that every human being carries, he took upon himself, where he says that my soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even unto death. This is this was, it says that he sweat great drops of blood, the, the strain of carrying our griefs and sorrows and all of the, the broken hearted tragedy of humanity came upon him in the garden. All right. And so we love Jesus Christ and we love his words and we know his words are truth. And as he says in John 17, he says, for this cause I was born and for this cause I came into the world to bear witness to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth hears my voice. So we know that when we hear the words of Jesus Christ, our Savior, we are hearing words of truth that has the power to give fallen human beings something to stand on, to redeem them, to lift them up out of the miry clay and set their feet upon a rock. It's, it's just amazing that, you know, how trustworthy the words of Jesus Christ are. Okay, they, they bring light in a dark place. If, if you're not sure how to sort something out, the, the promises of God through the Lord Jesus Christ show us how to sort things out, show us how to see clearly in a dark world. All right. So, all right. According to the very words of our amazing Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, these accusations, all these accusations, CES, Apologia, Mormon stories, Mormon discussions, all these comments from people like William, they prove beyond any doubt Joseph Smith is not a false prophet. This is what Jesus said that defines for all eternity one of several ways false prophets can be discerned from true. He said, and this is from Matthew chapter 7, verse 22, starting in verse 22. Oh, pardon me. Now, this is actually from uh, Luke chapter 6, verse 22, 23, and 26, okay? Blessed are ye when men shall hate you and when they shall separate you, Okay. It says in uh, the New King James, ex exclude you when men shall separate you from their company and shall reproach you and cast out your name as evil for the son of man's sake. Rejoice ye in that day and leap for joy. I think this is the only place in the whole New Testament, the only place in the Gospels where Jesus specifically says that something should make us leap for joy, okay? And he says... We should leap for joy when men hate us, when they exclude us from their company, they reproach us and cast out our name as evil for the son of man's sake. He says, rejoice ye in that day and leap for joy for behold, your reward is great in heaven for in the like manner did their fathers unto the prophets, speaking of the true prophets. Every single one of the true prophets, this was what was done. They were hated. They were separated out from the company of the false prophets. They were reproached. Their names were cast out as evil. Many of them were killed, tortured. All right. And then he says in verse 26, but woe unto you when all men shall speak well of you, for so did their fathers of the false prophets. So any honest person, all of you slanderers out there, any honest person who truly trusts the words of Jesus Christ can see from the above clear statements of Jesus Christ that false prophets, woe unto them, are always those who what? all men speak well of. This is an absolute statement. It says, woe unto you when all men speak well of you, for so did their fathers of the false prophets. So Jesus Christ, the word of God made flesh, the one who cannot lie, just like our father, he's God, just like our father's God, and God is not a man that he can lie. 
all right? He came to bear witness to truth, not to lie. And he says that, woe unto you, if, if there's somebody you want to know, are they a true prophet or a false prophet? If all men speak well of them, you know they're a false prophet, okay? If men are saying all manner of evil against them and casting out their name out as evil and excluding them and, and, uh, and you know, if, if, that's, if that's what's happening, then you know if your name's being cast out as evil, you're being separated and reproached and hated, then you're a true prophet. <laughs> okay. So you just proved, William, and all you non-Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saint Christians, or just, you know, a lot of you out there with Mormon stories and stuff like that, they're not Christians at all anymore. You're basically agnostics or atheists or just something. All right. You continually prove all over the earth by your constant not speaking well of Joseph Smith that it's impossible for him to be a false prophet by Jesus' own very clear and emphatic definition. On the contrary, you, William, and your 2.4 billion fellow non-Latter-day Saint Christians continually for the last 90 years, along with the whole uh, world, all right, have been and continue to fully fulfill Jesus Christ's prophetic definition of true prophets by being those who fulfill for Joseph Smith that men shall hate you, separate you from their company, and reproach you and cast out your name as evil for the Son of Man's sake. The most amazing aspect of this is how perfectly all this fulfills Jesus Christ's prophecy that this continual slandering of the true prophet, just as he said you would, you're actually in your own sincere hearts, you're doing it for the son of man's sake. Those of you who are non-Latter-day Saint Christians, like, you know, when, uh, when Jeff Durbin slanders Joseph Smith as a false prophet, when all of the evangelicals, charismatic and Pentecostals, and the vast majority of the other of the 2.4 billion non-Latter-day Saint Christians. I was immersed in that for 47 years. I heard nothing about the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, but continual dismissiveness, slander, misrepresentation, just of the most horrible sort, that they weren't Christians, that they their Jesus was a demon, their God was a demon, uh, that they, they believed in work salvation, they're all headed for hell. It's a great tragedy. They're, they're evil cultists. Somehow they appear to be nice, but that's actually evidence that they're even more evil because if you're evil, but you can appear nice, that's really bad. You know, this is this is the kind of slander. And of course, those of you that are trying to, you're, you're being a bit more scholarly about it because you're trying to win to apostasy from faith. You're trying to pull off of the covenant path of childlike faith sincere saints by getting into their their minds with mental objections and rational arguments trying to unearth what you what you've become persuaded are the dark roots of the of the evil tree you know the, the early history of the church and this and that you know and the the uh, the slandering of of uh, going back and miss and putting the, the darkest possible construction on absolutely everything concerning the early history of the church, which personally I have actually investigated and read a good bit about. And as far as I'm concerned, it's absolutely glorious. It's human, of course. Guess why? Human beings. <laughs> Faulty human beings, to be sure. But the heroism and the gloriousness and the glory of God was upon those people. His Holy Ghost was upon those people. It's absolutely amazing. All right. So in any way, in any case, all of the non-Latter-day Saint Christians that continually slander and cast out Joseph Smith's, the, the prophet and his prophetic people that he brought forth, you exclude them, you uh, slander them, you cast out their name as evil, 
Why? For the Son of Man's sake, you actually you actually are doing it in your own mind, sincerely, for the Son of Man's sake, which is just stunning, you know? So, all right. So true prophets, according to the very words of Jesus, can be known specifically by this. There are those who are will be continually slandered, hated, excluded, and reproached, and their very name cast out as evil for the Son of Man's sake. This, this is Jesus Christ's definition of a true prophet, all right? God's amazing prophet of the restoration, Joseph Smith, has fit this different definition and description of a true prophet perfectly ever since God called him and he obeyed in giving himself, even ultimately at the cost of his life, okay, to bring about the restoration of the church of Jesus Christ in the latter days, starting about 200 years ago. He still, to this day, you know, what, like 180 years after his death, fits Jesus Christ's description and definition of a true prophet to this very day, as, as you all just proved on a continual basis by all of your oceans of slander that you pour fo forth, not speaking well of him. For he also, utterly, in the most extreme way imaginable, does not fit Jesus Christ's description and definition of a false prophet, who Jesus Christ himself defined for all time as a supposed prophet that all speak well of. False prophets, Jesus specifically said, will be those who everybody speaks well of, okay? They, they are ear ticklers. They are those that Paul describes in First and Second Timothy, th those he, that that men will heap to themselves teachers having it tick, uh, itching ears. They'll find prophets that will tell them what they want to hear. Everything's fine. God's so pleased with you. It's all wonderful. You, you know, you you don't need to do all this other stuff. Just, oh, just believe in Jesus and do what's right in your own eyes. And it's just fine. It's just wonderful. It's just all absolutely wonderful. Okay. Uh, this is the definition of a false prophet. And uh, actually, it's it's really, if you read some of the statements of John DeLynn, uh, he, he really qualifies. He's like, you know, he thinks he thinks that the atonement of Jesus Christ is problematic because, uh, you know, it puts people in a position of actually needing somebody to save them. and And he just thinks that's like just problematic see this is the kind of thing false prophets say all right so anyway so woe to them that all speak well of them for jesus says plainly it's always been so of false prophets for they simply tell the false religionists those who have a form of godliness but deny the power thereof second timothy 3 5 the false prophets are ear ticklers who tell the false religionists what they want to hear woe to them so anyway thanks so much to all you slanders <laughs> oh for blessing the amazing prophet joseph smith with the most amazing blessed promise of our heavenly father and of jesus christ as he says in verse 23 he, he commands joseph smith and all who sustain joseph smith this is the clear direction from Jesus Christ and Heavenly Father. Rejoice ye in that day and leap for joy. For behold, your reward is great in heaven. For in like manner did their fathers unto the true prophets that were before you. Okay? By this command and promise of the Lord Jesus Christ, Joseph and all who sustain and trust in his true prophetic ministry are commanded to rejoice and leap for joy that you, all of you slanders and all like you, you know, the apology of people, Mormon discussions, Mormon stories, all of that kind of thing, you know, CES people, all of these people that, that uh, their whole, they're driven by this spirit that 
by, by Satan who hates Heavenly Father and hates Heavenly Father's purpose to fully redeem every possible human being that he can and bring them back to himself. You know, that's that spirit is determined to tear down and to destroy, to, to paint Joseph Smith as darkness, even though he's bring, brought forth the greatest light that's been on the earth in all of human history, you know, since the Lord Jesus Christ, and has restored the church in a way that it has never been. It, it, the glory of the latter temple is greater than the former temple, it says in, in the prophet Haggai, and that's analogous to the early church and the church now. It's never been better. The church of Jesus Christ has never had more glory and light than it has now. But the whole focus is to paint Joseph Smith as being a false prophet, a liar, a deceiver. The Book of Mormon is a lie and deception. The history of the early church is filled with lies and deception. And that in itself is nothing but a huge mass. Uh, it's a huge cesspool of lies and deception. And uh, those of you who are slanders, you've gobbled it up. And of course, what's in your well is coming up in your bucket and you're trying to pass it on. But if you think I'm going to engage with your slander point by point to try to refute it, when the reality of your slander does nothing but actually prove that it's impossible that Joseph Smith could be a false prophet, why would I bother to refute, refute it? You know, because you know, the, the constant worldwide ocean of slander directed at the prophet Joseph Smith is absolute proof that he's a true prophet of God and actually brought about the restoration of the true church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints on the earth to actually bring about the gathering of Israel, the proclamation of the gospel of the kingdom into all the world as a witness to all nations that the end might come, the worldwide evangelization and proclamation of the restored gospel and the preparation of a bride that will actually be worthy of the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so the, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints and the prophetic, founded by the prophetic ministry of Joseph Smith and the bringing forth of the Book of Mormon is the only thing on earth that's actually a threat to the sad reality, as it says in the last verse of the first epistle of John, that this is uh, John speaking, and we can say this too as members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. We know that we are of God, and the whole world lieth in the lap of the wicked one. The whole world lies under the sway of Satan, and the whole non-Latter-day Saint Christian world lies under the sway of Satan. And the proof of that is that it's all filled. The whole world and the whole non-Latter-day Saint Christian world is all filled with accusatory slander towards Heavenly Father's true prophet of the restoration and his prophetic covenant people that came forth through the true prophet of the restoration restoring a right understanding of the glorious atonement and bringing forth the Book of Mormon as a second testament of Jesus Christ, a glorious companion to the Bible. And all of this, this, this ocean of slander, simply proves that nobody else on earth is a threat to the devil but us. So anyway, all I can say <laughs> is that there, there's no need whatsoever or any point in trying to refute these point-by-point -point accusations that imagine, you imagine that you're exposing the dark roots of the church in the case of like Mormon stories type people or CES, that you're exposing the falsity and dark roots of Joseph Smith as a false prophet and the Book of Mormon as not being real and you know, the early history of the church has been having all sorts of dark stuff in it, you know. And then, of course, the apologia type people, the evangelical Christian self-styled evangelists of the Mormons and those of their sort. Uh, they all fancy that, you know, they have scriptural refutation, refutations of, you know, all the key Latter-day Saint doctrines and practices proving that they're all demonic and that the Latter-day Saints aren't even Christians and they're all headed for hell. But in any case, regardless of the particular tone 
and take of these slanderous accusations, there's no reason, there's no reason whatsoever to try and address them point by point, as I've said, because all they do is prove that our glorious prophet Joseph Smith is true, and that the Book of Mormon is true, and that the uh, incredible restoration of the Church of Jesus Christ of in these last days is actually true, and that there's actually, you know, a church on the earth that has living apostles and prophets that are true, Joseph Smith's successors, you know, now we're at the 17th prophet, uh, our incredible prophet, seer, and revelator, President Russell M. Nelson. Uh, and, you, you know, all of your attacks simply prove that it's all true. So th there's no need. There's no need to play whack-a-mole with your individual uh, accusations. There's no point. Because as a package deal, all they prove is that we're on solid ground and you're not. Okay? So in any case... Um, let's see. Let me see. How do I end this? So by this command and promise of the Lord Jesus Christ, that uh, Joseph and all who sustain and trust his true prophetic ministry are commanded to rejoice and leap for joy, that you and all like you, slandering their prophet Joseph Smith and slandering all who are in the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, that you've proved and continually proved to us and any sensible person who simply believes the words of Jesus Christ, that Joseph Smith's reward is great in heaven, for in just the same way, people such as you have treated every true prophet that came before him, and without exception, every false prophet, according to the words of Jesus, everybody spoke well of, which is the exact opposite of of. Uh, how Joseph Smith has been treated for almost 200 years, okay? So Jesus proves he's a true prophet and not a false prophet. And, you know, if Jesus' words prove that to me, why do I need to debate anything with you? You know, just wake up or go away, you know? Of course, you're not going to do either, most of you. The sincere among you, maybe you can wake up. But those that are insincere... Um, uh, ultimately, you know, I, I think if you don't straighten up and fly right in mortality because of the incredible gracious understanding that we have of the love of our heavenly father and the glorious atonement of the Lord Jesus Christ, we, we believe that even you ultimately in the spirit world will have the opportunity to straighten out a bit and will attain to some degree of heavenly glory that you're comfortable with. Okay. So even though, you know, especially with the apologia types, they think we're all headed to hell. We don't think you are, <laughs> you know, but in any case. So thank you, you all you slanders, for proving that our wonderful prophet is true and proving beyond any doubt that he can't possibly be a false prophet. It's like you do that better than we ever could apart from you. All right. So in Jesus name, I say these things and I testify in the name of Jesus Christ that Joseph Smith truly is and was God's true prophet of the restoration and the dispensation of the fullness of times to bring forth the rest restoration of the church of Jesus Christ on the earth. And he did it. And so I found an ark to climb aboard and I'm so glad and i'm so thankful for joseph smith and for the book of mormon and for the incredible church of jesus christ of latter-day saints and this this video is just one of four wonderful proofs this is the first of four wonderful proofs that the church of jesus christ of latter-day saints is true and the the wonderful thing about this one of course that i just i'm so tickled by because it's it's the very definition of irony is that the greatest proof that the church is true is all the slanderers against Joseph Smith and the Book of Mormon and the Restoration and the true church. According to the very words of our Savior, all the slander proves that we're true in the most incredible manner.
So, yay, hooray for Israel, hooray for Israel, hooray for Israel, hooray for Joseph Smith, hooray for the Book of Mormon, hooray for the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And we appreciate you all for helping us out by proving us true according to the words of Jesus Christ himself. Amen. Have a lovely evening.